Well, hello and welcome to this short demonstration of the CompuTrainer 3D software. We're sitting here at the start line, that's the pacer on the right, the metal man, and me on the left in the yellow and red. When I press the F3 button on the controller, we get this 3, 2, 1 countdown and then the go and we're off. And you can see away goes the pacer as I'm just getting going. Um, what we've got on the screen, if we're looking up at the top, we've got for this ride anyway a completely flat profile and it's a, a 20 mile long course and then you can see the two little bicycles top left hand corner with the flashing arrows that shows the the rider's progress along the course then we've got my name in the top left hand corner uh, in the bottom right hand corner that as you'll see is the um, elapsed time since the start of the ride um, the software allows you to toggle on or off a drafting facility and if you've got that switched on, which you'll see in a, a moment or two, um, if I ride up behind the metal man the load that the CompuTrainer applies becomes considerably less and you get a, a much um, easier ride, very very realistic in comparison to riding on the road. So you'll see that shortly. Um, underneath the picture you see oh, see, underneath Quentin in, it just for a moment there said drafting on and that was where I pressed the F3 switch to turn on the drafting. So we'll just watch that for a moment before I describe the rest of the screen. See I'm catching up on the uh, metal man drawing level now so I've not gone in behind him if I drop back behind him and tuck in, you'll see that uh, the screen will illustrate that I'm actually then drafting the uh, the silver man. So I've dropped back now. I'm moving across and accelerating. Yes, and you see now I'm now drafting him, so I'm getting a considerable. Um, tow my power output has dropped down from about 175 down to just over 100. And I'm now out of the draft and the power output is going back up again um, as I need to work harder to uh, to ride alongside him. But anyway, um, all the numbers below the uh, display screen which you may or may not be able to read, I'm not quite sure We've got speed, average speed and peak speed, distance travelled, um, the current wattage of both the pacer and myself, um, the average wattage, peak wattage, cadence, average cadence, peak cadence, and then there's my pulse, my average pulse, peak pulse, calories consumed and the current gradient which is zero. I've just turn drafting off and you see that was again showed on the screen as I toggle it on and off. Um, I've split the screen now and what this shows you once it settles down is when the riders are far apart you can see exactly where on the course each individual rider is so you get a slightly different view angle uh, for both riders. There are four main display modes the first one we were looking at, this is the second one, and the third and fourth you'll see shortly. This is the third one, so this is showing me riding along on the left, uh, I'm still with the silver man, and it's showing my current spin scan position on the right. So I've got a pedalling balance of 52 to 48, which is uh, perfectly okay, it's normally about 50-50. And you can see the graphs moving up and down uh, a perfect electrical motor, all those bars would be the same height, but you can see there's a big peak of power um, in the in the middle, which is where you're applying maximum force to the pedals. The left hand peak represents the power coming from my left foot and the right from the right. And I'm just sort of playing around here. I've dropped off the power on the right. And I'm now increasing the power from my right foot just to illustrate how the um, how the graphs change in response to that. And then I ease right off and 
pedal almost exclusively with my left foot and you see how the percentage power split changes and you can use this to um, develop your um, a smoother pedaling technique that's what you want to do so you can just sit and um, watch the course see how you're doing against your opponent and at the same time uh, keep an eye on your elapsed time and I've now switched over to the um, the fourth display mode which is um, a, a different representation of the spin scan information you can see we've still got the left right pedal split and that white line represents uh, whereabouts and how much um, torque I'm applying to the pedals. The two red horizontal lines represent the um, average torque angle on the pedals. Um, so you can see my average torque angle for my right leg is 99 and my left um, is about, about the same, they're both about the same. For perfect efficiency 90 degrees would be ideal because that's when you have the maximum leverage on the pedals. So switching back to the main screen again, see we've now um, gone through almost six minutes of this ride. I'm just showing the, the first part of it. Another thing I'll point out on the screen is above all the numbers there's a little row on the left hand side and the, the sort of top of the display where the numbers are there are three red numbers on their own and they represent the uh, cumulative training stress score the ride intensity factor and the current normalized power figures for the ride and those people who are familiar with training using power meters will be very familiar with those terms but it is nice to have them displayed in real time you see I'm having another draft there no, I'm just switching through the different um, display modes to give you a reasonable idea of uh, how it all works. So going back to the uh, spin scan now. And so I was just moving things around deliberately to allow people to see things, uh, see things changing in response to my changing pedal stroke. Road riders normally ride with um, a spin scan score of between 70 and 80, something like that. A very smooth pedaler would pedal consistently um, with a very high spin scan of 80 or above. I, I find personally that if I um, am riding at a higher percentage of my functional threshold power uh, there is a definite uh, reduction in the um, spin scan score as one would expect if you're working harder your pedal stroke is going to be uh, or is likely to be um, less smooth as you attempt to get the maximum downward force on the pedals and the extreme of that would be when you're actually standing on the pedals climbing so we're now coming up to the eight minute mark just looking at the general scene i hope that this little demonstration has been of um, of some interest it really is a, a fantastic training tool i don't use a 3d all the time uh, but it's nice to use it sometimes to break up indoor training and do things in different ways so i'll sign off now i hope you enjoyed that and good luck with your training. Bye.